this time of year, I'm excited. Almost all hunters are excited. We got our Moultrie mobiles out, kind of taking an unofficial inventory of what bucks are cruising where we get to hunt. Of course, we all hope that all our choke cameras are filled with great big bucks, but you know you're gonna have a range of bucks from yearlings, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, and even bigger bucks. Unfortunately, a lot of guys are still just looking at antlers and not considering the age of the buck. And I really encourage people to consider the age because age is the number one determinant of antler size. And we'd all be kind of misleading ourselves if we said antlers didn't matter. Now, I know I'll get a bunch of emails that says, ah, them bones don't matter to me, man. I'm just hunting for meat. Well, if that was true, you'd be harvesting does and helping that local deer herd out, removing a few deer make more groceries for the rest of the deer. So let's take a moment today and, and if we can kind of forget about antlers and look at that body shape because that's the way we hunters can accurately estimate the age of bucks in the field. One thing I really like about the Multi Mobile system is the app. Man, I, got, I can't quit playing with it, it's so cool. So I've got it up right now and I just selected to show bucks only it's amazing how accurate that artificial intelligence is. And we're just going through and look at some. I'll find a young one to start with. And when I look at this deer, boy, I mean, his back is super straight. His belly's not sagging at all. His chest is well above where his legs meet his shoulders. And his neck, gosh, when I cover those antlers up, it just looks like a doe. So it's a very frail animal. Looks exactly like a doe. This Young buck has a decent set of antlers. And you know, a lot of people are gonna look at him and say, hey, maybe that's a two-year-old, especially here in the Ozarks where the habitat's poor. But this is just a, a good looking yearling buck. I wanna take a break right here and say that it's not all about antlers or age. I want hunting to be fun. And I'm sharing this just so if you're concerned about such things, you can do a better job of estimating a buck's age in the field. And that usually means we got to mentally cover up those antlers and study the body. Here's the two criteria I use. Now I'm a, you know, a little bit older, more experienced hunter. I really enjoy chasing a mature buck. That may not be your station in life or even, you know, man, you're working hard, you're in the military, whatever, and you got just a limited time to hunt. Man, I'd get some venison any legal way you could. Big doe, yearling buck walks by. Here's the, the two criteria I have. So what's the landowner's objectives? Of course, I know my objectives if I hunt here at the Proven Grounds, but if I'm a guest with Mr. Handby or one of my buddies, what are their objectives? If they say, Grant, boy, I really enjoy seeing the older age bucks or my trail cameras or I'm out working on my land, and I ask you not harvest anything that's you know under four years old, well, I certainly want to honor their wishes. They've put the time and effort into managing that deer herd. So number one, what's the landowner's objectives? Of course, if you're on most public land, there are no age objectives, no age restrictions. Some public areas do have some quality deer management, trophy management standards, but that's pretty rare. And then the second is, of course, it needs to be legal. That's first always, but what are your objectives for yourself as a hunter? And I see this both ways. I see young new hunters that have watched way too much TV or YouTube or whatever, and they think, man, I, Gosh darn it, I, I seen Mark Dre kill a 200 inch deer. I'm not shooting anything but a 200 inch deer. Well, don't do that, man. Harvest some deer, get some experience, have some fun. You get burnt out waiting for a 200 inch deer in most areas throughout the Whitetails range. Make your harvest objectives realistic and make sure that they fit the landowner's objectives. All right, let's back out of this rascal here. Go back to our main page here. And here I see a deer, a buck, and I'm gonna Pause this right here. I paused it in the perfect position. He's broadside and head is up, kind of alert, not way up like stretched out. That'll mess up where the neck kind of appears to meet the chest. But you know, a deer standing broadside lets you see that outline much better than any other position. So this deer is almost perfectly broadside. His back is straight, but if I split the screen, I believe his chest is sagging a little bit closer to where the legs meet the shoulders than that first buck. His neck appears slightly bigger and certainly his front shoulders are filled out more. When you see a yearling buck, those front shoulders are narrow. If they're coming to you, the front legs actually look real close together. 
and a real mature deer, there'd be more space between those legs because his chest is sagged in between the shoulders and it literally just spreads out a little bit more. So this deer is a two-year-old buck and he, he's just got a very typical two-year-old body shape. The negative here is for this young deer, especially if he was on public land or somewhere, he has got a great set of antlers. I mean, he is cooking with gas anywhere, let alone here in the Ozarks. So, and in a drought, he's got a big old set of antlers, but he's clearly an immature deer. And one reason we talk about age is antlers, when you shoot a yearling buck, it's only expressing a small percentage of its antler growth potential. Two year old, still not that much. And this depends on the habitat. If you're in real low quality habitat, I've seen some areas in upper New York and the Adirondack Park where it's just all closed campy forest, no grocers anywhere. Those deer were hungry, hungry, hungry. They got about as big a set of antlers at two or three as they would get as a wilderness area so they live long at five or six years old. There just wasn't enough groceries for them to express more potential. And if you're in ag country, boy, I mean, there's just groceries everywhere. Those deer probably aren't expressing their full antler growth potential to five, six, seven years of age. So depending on where you are, you may want to set that harvest criteria based on what age bucks express a good bit of their antler growth potential. This deer is a two-year-old in the Ozark Mountains showing great potential. He's got a lot of room to grow, but I know bucks here get much larger, so he would get a pass for me. The real point is, Look at where his neck merges with his chest. It's a good six inches or so above the brisket. His front shoulders are a bit more filled out than the first deer. His back is still perfectly straight. There's no sag to it. And his belly isn't like mine. It's got no pooch to it. It's pretty straight. So we're calling this one too. The buck I've got pulled up now has a classic body shape of a three-year-old. And what comes to my mind when I think of a three-year-old buck is that three-year-old racehorse at the Kentucky Derby. Man, you can tell they're muscled up and they're not a yearling, but they're not, you know, they're not fully filled out. They're slick and built to race, man. Well, that's what a three-year-old buck looks like. And if you look at this deer, his back is straight. There's no pot belly, no pot belly on a racehorse. His shoulders are clearly bigger than the yearling and two-year-old we've talked about. What's interesting here and why I always encourage people to look at the body size, the body shape, not size, but the body shape versus the antlers, is this buck's antlers appear smaller than the two-year-old buck we pulled up. And you know, if in classic hunting situation, maybe someone's just shooting antlers, and that two-year-old walked out, and this buck walked out, a lot of times that two-year-old that had more antler growth potential would be harvested and that would maybe be called high grading where you're taking the best and leaving the rest. If you're on public land or you don't have much time to hunt, you're hunting on granny's back 40, you know, harvest whatever makes you happy. But if you're hunting somewhere where they have a, you know, a good deer management plan and have certain objectives, you want to honor that. If I look at this neck, guy ship merges with the chest about halfway down, further, clearly further down than the two year old buck in the yearling. It's, it, it, when I cover up the antlers and I look at it, it doesn't go, well, boy, I can't tell if that's a doe or a buck. The neck is so big, you're thinking buck. I don't know why. Maybe his head's behind a tree or something. You can't see the antlers. You're still thinking buck. On the other two deer, if its head was behind some milo down eating in a food plot or a tree, you might be going, well, is that a buck or doe? I can't tell. This body just screams buck. But the back is so straight, and the tummy actually comes up. It's trimmed like a racehorse. Shoulders are about the same size as the hands. They're not bigger. He doesn't have that buffalo shape. You can just tell he's bulked up a little bit. Those are classic body characteristics of a three-year-old buck. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. I'm going to pull one up here that gives us a little comparison because if we went over a good bit of the basic things I use, 
And I'm going to let this stop out here. Here's a young buck. Ooh, and now oh, let me back this up. So clearly we've got, we've got two bucks mid frame and they're both perpendicular to us and their heads are up one a bit more than the other. Well, I look at that buck on the left side of the frame and then look at the buck on the right side of the frame. There's a massive difference of where that chest, how much chest is showing, where the neck merges with the chest above the brisket. On that first deer, clearly a very young deer. His chest, his neck merges way above his chest, way above the brisket. And the second buck, big old great looking buck, his neck merges with his chest almost at the brisket. There might be an inch or so in between there. That neck is full. Here we are in August. They're still in velvet. There's low testosterone levels. And that buck's neck looks like a big old taxidermy mount already. You know that buck is mature and he's probably expressing most of his antler and body size potential. And I just wanted to go over comparison. We're talking about some things. And then another thing, when I look at that front buck, his belly's a flat line. Man, he's sleek and trim like a track runner. That second buck over there, he's kind of more like the coach on the side that's been stopping at the ice cream shop a little bit much. His belly's pooching down a little bit. Then look at the shoulders. You can see, even with some motion, clearly the outline of that more mature buck on the right. You can see the outline of his shoulders. A little bit buffalo shaped. His shoulders actually appear in this image slightly larger than his hindquarters, like a buffalo. You know, a buffalo's got that great big chest. You've seen it on nickels or whatever, and his hindquarters are small. When we look at the buck on the left, the young buck, his hindquarters appear significantly larger than his shoulders. And that kind of slides through time. You get those mid-age bucks, like a three, they'd be about even. You start seeing that big chest in most deer herds, about four, certainly five. That chest will be much larger than the hindquarters. That allowed me to share a few hints about what a mature buck looks like. Now let's find one by itself. This is a classic hunting example, but unless you're like in South Carolina or somewhere, Tennessee, that has an early velvet season, you might see this, hopefully in daylight, but the bucks would not have velvet. I'll show you a little video clip here of three bucks stepping kind of one, two, three in front of camera frame or camera's view at a time. And that first buck, you know, in the posture, right when the camera comes on, you're going, man, that's a good deer. That left antler is a little bit bigger than the right. You might call him lefty or something. And man, it looks like a big old deer. But let's let this roll just a little bit. Probably let it roll all the way through. Then we go back and we talk about it. And then, you, then this buck steps in frame. You forget all about that second buck, that buck back there. And the third buck steps in. But when you see that, that big buck step in there, there is no doubt in your mind that's a mature deer. And we go through those exact reasons why. But one of the things I like to share is if you have to talk yourself into that age class, you're sitting in your redneck blind or something, and a deer walks out, and you go, oh, boy, at that position, it looks like his neck goes all the way down. Or, boy, I think when I saw him step, he had a swayed back. If you've got to talk yourself into it, Put your weapon down. When you see a buck and just your first glimpse, you go, man, that's a shooter. Then that's one to use your tag on. And we got that big old buck. We actually call him double barrel sticking out here. Uh, but when I look at this buck, man, he's got a pop belly right off the bat. <laughs> he looks like me. And his front shoulder is just huge. I mean, just you're looking at just thinking about carving some meat off that rascal. Huge front shoulder. <clears throat> and his neck even in this posture where I stopped it, it just merges really, really low on his chest, close to his brisket. And on a mature buck, that brisket seems to have a bunch of extra skin just hanging there, just loose, almost like a turkey waddle skin hanging there. On a young buck or a doe, that'd be tight. You probably skinned a bunch of does in your time. And you know, that, that's tight skin right there. But on a big old buck, there's just a bunch of extra. You can just take your hand actually and grab it and shake it. His head's big, and, and then of course his eye's shining right there in the camera. And just go up a couple inches and look at those antler bases. And this is a tip I don't share a lot, but antler bases tend to increase in size throughout the age. I'm talking about the circumference of the antler right where it meets the skull. And that antler base on this buck is clearly significantly larger than the circumference of the eye. So a buck's eye circumference is about four inches, give or take. There's some variability there. So a four inch base is pretty good. You know, you walk up to it, man, that's got some heft to it. 
But when you go up, now this buck's got velvet, so it get a little smaller once it sheds. But that base of that buck's antler is significantly larger than the circumference of his eye. And you put your hand around that, your fingers might not close on the other side because huge base. All that together, I mean, you just see this buck walk out. You go, man, that's a mature deer. He is probably not expressing any more of his antler potential. And there's a whole bunch of pounds of venison standing there. So it's, a, it's what I call the win-win. A whole bunch of venison and a good set of antlers to put on your wall. So we went through a yearling and a two-year-old and some a little bit of mid-age stuff and then sure enough, a mature buck. And I just want to share this, not put my harvest objectives on you. Again, that determines, that should be determined by the property where you're hunting, the landowner's goals and objectives. Let's always respect that because they're the one, you know, developing the habitat, paying the taxes and granting you permission to hunt there. So you should certainly honor their request. If they say, ah, just go hunt and have a good time. You hunt by granny's house or something like that. Harvest whatever buck or doe that makes you happy, of course, it's legal in season. I've had for many, many years, we're talking decades, every season harvested way more does than I have bucks because my neighbors are probably gonna harvest a lot of bucks and I need to help balance the adult sex ratio. Having a deer herd that's you know, pretty balanced, no more than two bucks per doe, and I really prefer one to one, uh, will allow that deer herd to express more of its potential and provide plenty of venison for the freezer. Studying deer and their behavior and even how to age deer on the hoof is just a fun way to interact with creation and learn more. But even more importantly, I hope you take time every day to intentionally spend some time in God's Word and intentionally seek His will for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.